finally gave way to the diesel, one of the saddest things about the end of that era was the fate of the old locos. Some famous names like Evening Star and the Flying Scotsman were preserved in museums, but thousands of old locos were scrapped. Some of them ended up in a yard in Barry in South Wales, and you remember back in 1980 when I went down to rescue 80080. It had been bought by Brel Ewart, a Derbyshire railway enthusiast, and he and his mates drove her out of the scrapyard on a low loader. Then she was transported up the M1 to Matlock and completely stripped down. Yeah, OK. At Matlock station, I helped Brel start the long job of restoration, and he's still carrying out that work at nearby Butterley. This magnificent LMS3F is just one of the locos here at the Midland Railway Centre in Derbyshire. Butterley Station's got shunters, mainline expresses and freight locos, but it's also the new home of 80080. Well, we're working on the front of the boiler and we're putting six new rivets in to complete the riveting on the front of the smoke box. So perhaps you'd like to give it a hand in sure. a few minutes. Yeah. These, these are rivets here, are they? The red hot rivets that we're going to put in on the front ring of the boiler. Right. Can you do the riveting up here? Yes, up here, up the ladder. All right. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, sure. Lovely. Thanks very much. Bob Hunter was already using the riveting gun on the boiler and he handed me a pair of face goggles for protection. Have a go now. Is this because of the sparks? Yes, yes. It can be a bit dangerous. Right. Can we warm a rivet up now, please? The steel rivets for the smoke box were heated by gas torch until they were red hot. Before it cools down, the rivet has to be handed as fast as possible along the chain of men and banged through the ready-made hole. Then it's held in position on the inside, ready to be hammered flat on the outside. There's a riveting hammer. Don't Give put your... my six gun. Yeah, don't put your finger on the right. string there. I had to grip the powerful gun tightly and press down extremely hard to flatten the hot rivet at both ends. You only get one crack at this job because once the rivet cools, it's fixed. So Bob kept a close eye on what I was doing. Do. Is that all right? Yeah, that's, that's a belter, right. is that? Yes, right. How many marks out of ten for that? Oh, seven. Do you come here often, or just when you're mending boilers? Oh, quite often, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth are you on with now? Uh, well, we've got to clean the inside of the boiler shell, so... Uh, You'd like me to get inside? That's it. Down we go. I thought that was the idea. Oh, I see what you mean. Feet first, Simon. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> So far, so good. Has anybody got any grease? I think I'm stuck. I'm definitely stuck. Hang on. Oh, that's all right. A bit tired, isn't it? It is a bit. Yeah, that's an understatement. I knew I shouldn't have had that blown up. <laughs> I bet Cyril Smith would have fun getting through there, oh, you know? Oh, sure would. This is really good, isn't it? It's so big. That's right. Now, the job we've got to do is to try and clean this scale off the inside of the boiler bar. It's like an old kettle, really. It's isn't like it? a kettle, isn't it? Yes. yes. We've already taken three barrelfuls out. Good grief. Yeah, I bet you've got through a few overalls as well. That's right, I have, yes. Yeah. So this is the needle gun that we used to get it off with. Right. You just, press, you just press that there. That's right. That's pretty good, isn't it? it have is, you got yeah. any fillings one doing? <laughs> <laughs> It must have been hard work for those old men who used to work in boilers years That's ago. That's right, yes. Uh, very few would put up with it today, I'm afraid. You think? That's right, yeah. yes. Did they just used to be men who just worked as boiler right, boilersmiths who did nothing else but uh, repair boilers, make boilers and clean boilers out. Sat in boilers all the time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Spent many years, really, if you're totally all up together inside a boiler. Yeah. Well, shall I keep on fetching some of it off That's and right, you, yes. you scrape it That's up? That's right, I've got a shovel here to... All right. While Brell and I carried on cleaning the inside of the boiler, Bob and the rest of the team were hard at work on the chassis. This was the same buffer that I'd sandblasted three and a half years ago. On an old engine like this, there's no end of nuts, bolts and joints that need tightening and oiling, ready for the big day when she'll steam again. 
This pad was being greased, ready to hold the restored boiler in position. 80080 has been restored in two halves. The finished boiler is standing by the tracks over there, and the wheels and chassis are waiting on the line up ahead. Something must speed up. Now, we've got to get the boiler onto the chassis, and to do that, we're going to need this. It's a giant steam crane, big enough to lift a loco boiler. OK, Simon, come on. It was a big responsibility shunting the vast weight of the old crane into position for lifting the boiler. Whoa! Whoa! But with Brell's expert help, I managed it. Once it's stopped, the wheels are individually braked to prevent the crane slipping. Then, as the 16-metre arm started to jib up, I ran down to help Brell wind the outriggers into position. There are two on each side, and they stabilise the crane when it's lifting. Can you bring some timber up, Mel? It's a lot of work, isn't it, to get it ready? It is, yes. Are there many of these cranes left? No, this is one of only three left in the country, Simon. How old is this one? Uh, built about 1930, weighs 168 tonnes, so it's quite a big one, really. Yeah. It's got a fire and a boiler, just like any steam engine, and it's been beautifully restored here at Butterley. Its driver, Eric Riley, swung it carefully round to hook up 8080's boiler. You right, Eric? All right. Yeah, up steady on the block, then. How heavy is it, this boiler? About 15 tonnes at the moment, Simon. So oh, it is, yes, yes. Right. So I'm just guiding it in, then, with this rope. That's I suppose right. the critical thing is to, so you've got it balanced That's right. on the chain. You've got to get it dead right so that it comes down level onto the frames of the loco. Brell and I gently guided the boiler up until it was high enough to swing round. Should nearly be there now, Simon, to swing over, I think. All right, hold it. Got to do it for now. Yes, I think we can swing over at that and uh, jib round. All right, Eric. The wheels and cogs carried the 15-tonne boiler round towards the waiting chassis. Come on. The steam crane might be nearly 50 years old, but with a good operator, it can lift with just as much precision as many of the modern cranes I've worked with. You clear there, Mel? Yes, Simon. Bit more. Bit more. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We're all right at that. Yes, I think we're all right at that, Simon. What do we do now? We've got to bring the engine forward now, Simon, and get precisely in the right place underneath it, and then we'll lower it down. Right. <coughs> OK, Mel, call him on. Can we clear that thing? Yes, we just clear it. Yeah. Steady. 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 Whoa! Whoa! About eight miles out at that. What's it like at your end, Barry? We need to come forward about two inches with the frames. So how's it bolted down, then? Well, the, the holes there, Simon, have got to line up precisely with the holes in the saddle. These? With exactly in line. So if you keep your eye on those, yeah, please. Yeah, all right. 